Okay, well, I guess we're live at 11.05 on BC with Spirit Cars, and Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars, is behind the camera there. This is John's car. You see the list is getting some stuff marked up, marked off of it. We have our break-in headers here. It's all looking pretty tight. It's getting close. we got to put a, uh, a chrome on the front here for the firewall and some other stuff. But this is just a teaser. I'm going to be out of town tomorrow, so Monday we'll just do, we'll have a whole uh, live at 11.05 or whenever, at, uh, and it's going to be about motor break-in. Today we're going to do some Bondo. You can catch me out in the front here. What in the world is that? Okay. I got to get this done. I need the firewall. We made this plug. It had no firewall. We recessed it about three inches. This is our Model A Roadster. We really need to get this into production. I got some sold. I want one for me. I got a little bit more straightening to do on it. So start by, you know, see if it's straight or not. So this got some dents here, and I wouldn't even call them dents. I'm an old body man. I've worked in metal a long time, and I kind of found even in spirit cars here, as much as we work in fiberglass and build cars, an old body man is not necessarily what we want to train to do this. It's different. You can bend metal, you can weld metal, you can stretch metal. If your windshield post is on your door is off a little bit, you want to close the wind gap, you can put your knee in it and pull it back and bend it. Fiberglass is not bent. But anyway, principle's the same. Got a dent. I can feel that. Can you feel that? You probably can't feel that. There is no shame in using a product called Geico. I personally don't use it very much, but some of the guys here do. If it's something you really feel you need to do, and it helps you make it straight, and it does, and especially when we block out one of our, our molds to get that super straight, then we, we go ahead and, and they use a, we use a die, not the Geico here, but then we block and block and block. So if I hit this, with guide code. Then I take my block, I've got a block here. You can see that dent I told you I could feel. Now you can see it, I've sanded the high spots here. But the low spot, since this is a block, it didn't go into that groove. Um, lots of techniques you learn after years and years. I can, I can say I've built hundreds of cars, but I can probably say, in all honesty, I've spread thousands of gallons of Bondo in my lifetime, and I don't think that's any kind of an exaggeration. Just a couple tips. This block makes it straight. Your hand can make it straight. If I have just sandpaper in my hand, well, what's going to happen? If I push with my fingers, my three fingers, my four fingers, I'm going to make, especially if I go just the same direction, I'm going to make grooves in there. But the palm of my hand, if I'm holding the paper and I'm working the palm of my hand, I can usually get it pretty straight with the palm of my hand. A couple tools. Probably everybody's familiar with an air file, and I got some some aggressive. This is 36 grit on here, and this is aggressive. If you're using a cheese grater, you're serious. You, you are in the beginning stages of creating something. But there's a, there's a stage in the Bondo where it's not real hard, but it's not super soft. You can actually cheese grate, and it comes off like, little, like you're grating cheese. It's my favorite tool, the mud hog. I use Velcro paper, this happens to be 40 grit here. Now I'll tell you what, I'm going to put some Bondo on here, and while it's drying, I can go over a few more things. Mixing your Bondo, it's a lot like mixing any chemical that's activated, whether you be a, um, a urethane primer that has to be activated, it don't harden, it will stay like this, it'll get gummy if you leave the uh, the can open, but it will never get hard 
to the point of being able to finish it until you put the activator in. And I never thought about percentages. I've always just done it. I, I would assume you're still looking at about a percent and a half. The active ingredient is this, is still the peroxide. And I'm not sure what all the chemical compound is, but sometimes it's in red, sometimes it's in blue. And the main reason for the color is so you can see how well it's mixed. So that should be enough. I may be a little dark. It's hot today. Sometimes it, it kicks, again, the 70-degree 70, the 70 rule. If you missed that show, well, you missed it. But <laughs> pretty much times are all based on 70 degrees, and the warmer it gets, if it's 80 degrees, it dries twice as fast. 70 degrees, it dries at what's recommended, and 60 degrees, it dries twice as slow. So I make sure I'm thoroughly mixed. I can see there's, I don't have my glasses on, but I can see that's all blue. There's no white streaks in there. I'm mixed. I'm good. I try to get the Bondo off of my spreader because underneath there it usually doesn't mix well. And you might have that go on. If you leave unmixed Bondo going underneath, what's going to happen? You're going to have a soft spot under there and you're not going to really even know it if the, hard, the top is hard and it could shrink. I'm mainly concerned about filling the holes, but if I try to just fill the hole, I'm going to, I'm going to make it more lumpy. So I can probably just pull it over that through the whole area and when I sand it, since all of this Bondo is going to be about the same uh, hardness when it's drying, it will all sand pretty consistently. Something that you need to be aware of when you're uh, sanding is the hardness of the different material. Now if you're doing it on metal, that metal is going to be harder than any Bondo you got on there. This fiberglass here is going to be harder than the Bondo. If I put a Duraglass under that, it's going to be harder than the Bondo, but softer than the fiberglass. Now the softest material is going to sand the easiest. So uh, I like to see my board clean. Some people just use a piece of cardboard throw the cardboard away every time. I like my Bondo board and uh, I assure you everybody in the shop here recognizes my Bondo board and nobody messes with my Bondo board and the same with the other people but I like it. I like to keep it clean. If you got little chunks and humps and bumps on there when you try to mix it it's going to just leave a little notch in there every time which is not good. You know what I wanted to do? Here's a trick we're showing you. I'm going, to, I'm going to actually do it and show you. I'm giving up some secrets here, so you guys are worth it. You're, you're worth giving up my secrets. Okay, so I'll mix up a new batch here. I'll just make a pretty good batch. And I'm not sure you really always waste Bondo, because there's always some kind of use for it. I'm a green guy. Not exactly a tree hugger type green guy, but I like to look at old stuff and repurpose it. So I'm always looking at what's around me, what can I do with that, what can I use that for. Alright, I need a body line on the side of my car. I'm creating something new, something different, something exciting. I've taken my Bondo spreader and uh, I, don't, I forget what I use this for but I bet this is a body line in one of the Spirit cars on a plug. Now if I pull it, I've just created a body line and that sure looks like a Model A body line to me. So I've just created two body lines and if I put this big blob over here I'm not sure what it is, but it could be the start of something. I'm 
again, you'll have to be patient with me. I like to clean my board. So we'll clean my board. And this board here is pretty, it's pretty new. It's only a couple years old. And I keep my board for a long time. You can kind of see, I had this board, I don't know how many years it took me to get this board wore out and all in the middle, but when it's all done, you can always do a little pinstriping on it if you want. So I just pinstripe it, put my little name on there, and I hang it on the wall. Lots of stuff you can do with that extra bondo. While we're waiting for that to dry in the car. Here's old Muddy Mud Skipper. A little bondo, some, some glass glass, and few and this and that. I call it mother and daughter. If I'm an artist and if that's art, everybody's got something to say. So mother and daughter, here's her egg there. You kill her egg, you're killing a mud skipper. So this is mother and daughter. And today, just before we went live, AAA Cooper was here. We got about five or six, I don't know what we got back there, six or seven, five yep. or six pallets. And the truck driver goes, what are we going to do with that? I don't have room. So when that happens, you see the frazzle bob. But then sometimes after the show's over, I get all happy. So we have the happy BC. So something else. And you could uh, use your fiberglass nasty, throw some of that in there, and Bondo and a little paint that's left over. And we did have to get the eyes from somewhere, but so never a dull moment. I've always got more time than I know what to do with, I'm sure. Still wet here. I can stick my finger into it. This is a little softer than I would want it sand with. Can you turn the volume down on that? If I get, I don't want to blow you out with the volume. But. I like the mud hog, and you can see here, almost like a guide coat, where I've sanded. And I keep, this mud hog does a really good job of keeping things straight and it does a good job going around corners. So it's a, really a multi-purpose tool. The air file, it does a good job of being straight. But you can see I'm having a little difficult time getting in there. Anyway, you can see the divots there still. I've got Bondo on all of it. I'm high here still. I'm still high up in there. So I can keep sanding until I feel that this whole thing is straight. I'm hoping it's straight on this coat, and then I'll go back over it and uh, look for pinholes. I've worked it around and you can kind of see the color changes. I've still got, this would be a, a telltale sign of a high spot, but it's really it's not. It's been sanded down, but this is harder, so it won't sand as fast as this. You can see where I showed you before where that paint had stayed in there. It was a little low. Well, the color, and you can still see some of the, uh, the guide coat, the black underneath that. But this actually feels pretty straight. I did that with 40 grit. We use activated primers. Uh, I think I'll go into the reason for activated primers and stuff like that in, in a, another show because it's pretty, it's not complicated, but there's a lot of information there. I like a DA at this point. I've got 80 grit on here. <laughs> hit it with 80 grit, but I'll get everything really well all around the corner. Edges like this, I want to get by hand around the edges, around the top by hand. This I would do by hand. Um, a lot of this comes into personal preference. We use 
a Velcro type material. They have spigot also, and I don't know if they even have uh, the kind where you put the glue on. They had feathering disc adhesive you would glue on, put on here, and the, the tape would go on and off. We don't use that. So I went from uh, 80 grit. This is a 120 or a 180. I happen to have 180. So then I'll go to 180. <laughs> between smooth and straight. If I'd have hit this with 180 to start with and all them humps, I'd have made it smooth, but it would have been pretty humpy. But since I went with uh, 40 grit, that knocked it off pretty level, pretty flat. And on this case, I want it flat. Sometimes you want it curved, you want whatever shape it is you want. I may have missed it. You always have a window. Did this fondo soft enough you can hit it with this? Now if I'm shaping something really, really big, you can kind of get the idea. I've, I've, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I've shaped kind of a nice curve there onto it and I could shape a nice round into that. If I was looking for a round. And then that almost looks like something going into a couple lines and if I was really creative today I'd probably trim the edges and fill it all the way around and uh, this could be someday you may see a giant mobile hanging from the ceiling. It'll be all painted. I did one of those once, and every time you looked at it, it looked like it was going to crash down on some high dollar car, but it was pretty cool. I need to build another mobile someday. We're to 180. Block it. I would recommend blocking. I mean, this I've got some 80 on here and block it. I've tried to rush through this a little bit just so I could give you an idea of all the way through the process from putting the bondo on, getting it straight, and getting it ready for primer. 180 is ready for primer. I, I will probably, before I said this is done, I'm going to go over it one more time, look for pinholes, and I'll use a block. I, I may use the big block for a while up in this area. It, it's hard to beat that, it's straight. When I get to the little areas, and this one's kind of a, a foam block, this one's a little bit harder. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. If I can get up around the corner here, I can get around the corner here. Does pretty good. So I'm about close. By the end of the day, I should have primer on this, and I'm about to pull the mold on my uh, Model A Roadster recessed firewall. I don't know. I'm anxious to build one. I don't know when we actually get to it. But that's it for today. And I did remember my little yellow book. I think the other one was called what? Coffee Break Contemplations. Yep. And this one's called Pass It On by my friend Ernie Gilcrease. We call him the Hot Rod Man. And uh, if you've been following us, we just at the end of a uh, show, if I remember my little yellow book, I just read one of his, uh, today is Pass It On, Thought for the Day. We are made of the same matter that makes up the universe. Are we the universe examining itself? Are we a small part of a larger consciousness? Hmm, that takes a lot of thought. I'm going to read one more. Today I will make every experience a positive one. The difference I make will be the difference worth making. A little less thought on that one. So, there's your good words for today. I will not be with you tomorrow. I'm heading up north to Chicagoland. We're going to watch the start of the chase. Uh, go Bush. My son's a, a Mars guy, so I'm going to try. We'll be in the pits. I'm going to see if I can Talk to Kyle and see who he thinks is going to be second this year because he's going to be our winner. Anyway, I'll try to do maybe a live show from the, the pits at the Chicagoland Raceway for the NASCAR races sometime this weekend. But tomorrow we will not be live at 11.05 in the shop. Monday, look forward to seeing John start car started. We'll do a, a video on the startup of that and a break-in, and then we'll do one more video on the entire car just as uh, maybe be take it out on the road and play with it, maybe what you want to do for breaking on driving it. 
So for today, we're glad to have you with us.